Today I'm checking out this inverter. It was sent to me at no cost so I can do this review. Let's take this thing out of the box, see everything that it comes with, and then test this thing out, see how well it does. All right, so when you take the inverter out of the box, this is basically what you're gonna find. You're gonna have the manual, of course, it's gonna go over everything that you need to know about this inverter. It has a remote with a really long remote cord, so that way, you know, you can mount this somewhere that's pretty far away from your inverter and still be able to turn it off and check status on it. It comes with two lead wires that are more than sufficient, it looks like, gauge-wise, to be able to handle the power this inverter can do. And then it comes with two sets of screws and anchors so that if you want to mount the inverter. Now, there's a couple cool things about this inverter that I've noticed already pulling out of the box. One, it has these little like rubber boots that go over the mounting brackets to keep it, you know, I guess from scraping up anything. If you're going to mount it somewhere, it's going to be nice and clean. And it's going to keep you probably from like creating some unneeded ground um, inside your RV or anything like that if it's going to shake around a little bit. It just gives it that nice extra protection, so I really like that. It's got those feet all the way around it. On this side of the inverter here, it's got two AC outputs. It's got the remote plug. It's got a USB port that's A and then a USB-C port here. It also has a screen here that's going to give you information about what's going on with the inverter. And then it's got two green and one red LED lights here that again are more status related, uh, you know, like faults and things like that. On the other side of this inverter, you're going to find the, what I would consider lugs or the hookups for this. I really like the inverters when they put these plastic covers over them because it helps you reduce the risk of having a fault, like a, a short where it accidentally grounds or, you know, positive touches something and you know catches fire whatever these help you just have that much better prevention so you'll still see there are bolts here with these nuts on them that are actually what you would connect these lead wires into so these will help prevent any kind of you know short circuiting anything touching these to short out so that's really nice i really like that it also has this nice area here with the fan it's going to you know blow in it's got two nice size fans here and then a nice big opening here where the plugs are to allow a lot of air movement which you really want for an inverter so that way when it does start to heat up it can actually move that air really well this is a pure sine wave inverter so that means the electricity that's coming out of this the ac electricity is going to have a pure sine wave you know and not the modified sine waves that are very block like uh, this is going to be something that's going to work good with your sensitive electronics. So this is a pure sine wave. This is going to be good, clean electricity coming out of this inverter. So I'm going to go ahead and get some of my lithium iron phosphate batteries that I have. I'm going to need at least two batteries to get anywhere near being able to hit the 2000 watts uh, that this can put out. I want to also test the peak uh, power outage of this so that way making sure it can peak above 2000 watts and still be able to handle that okay. So let me get all that set up and we'll put it to the test. All right, so this is what I have set up with the inverter to test the inverter. I have this inverter set up with these two 100 amp hour, you know, 12.8 lithium iron phosphate batteries, you know, pretty standard batteries. I have them in parallel. You can see the wires here. These wires are a little thin to be running these in parallel at max, so I doubled up the wires. Then I also have a battery monitor hooked up to these two batteries so it can tell me, you know, voltage, how much, you know, ampage is coming out of these batteries, what kind of wattage we're using, just all of that here on the battery monitor itself. Then, of course, all of that is hooked up here to the inverter. I've got the inverter remote on, so I don't have to use the switch on the side. I can use this switch to turn it on and off. Then I have a... 1500 watt heat gun hooked up to this inverter and you can see this little plug here this is going to a small portable air conditioner it's about 8000 BTUs it will run when it's on the fan you know 70 80 watts when it's on the compressor mode and everything is you know using the compressor and getting cold it will run you know six seven sometimes up to 800 watts the key there, though, is, is that thing will surge up to 2 kilowatts. I mean, it'll it surge up to 2,000 watts just turning on. Now, this is a 2,000-watt inverter, so, you know, 
that's just how that goes. I mean, it would be able to handle the surge anyways because, you know, that's the full rating. Now, if you had a 2,000 watt item that surged up to 4,000, you know, it would surge to four and then go down to this. This inverter will surge to double its wattage, it says. So it could surge up to 4,000 for a short, very short period of time uh, to allow for those motors to start and everything. But after that, it's going to, you know, if it keeps getting 4,000 watts, it's going to kick off because that's not what it's rated for. So uh, it's rated for 2,000. We're going to see how well it does at 2,000, but we're also going to do a little bit of testing to peek it out and see what it does. So let me get this battery monitor and everything started and we'll get this test going. These two batteries are sitting at about 13.6 volts, which is pretty normal for resting. Again, we're not really testing the batteries though. We're testing this inverter, but I had to put two batteries together because I don't have a battery that could do, you know, anywhere near the peaks on this inverter by running one battery. So I had to put two in parallel. This may not even handle the peaks that this inverter can do. We may still have an issue where these batteries kick off before the inverter, but these should be able to handle a rating higher than the inverter. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn the inverter on. If you can see that there, I don't have it. There we go. This has an on and off switch here and an on and off switch like you saw earlier in the video on the side. You just leave this one turned off and then you can control everything here. If you turn this one on, then it overrides this. So leave the one on the inverter off so you can control it from the remote. And then of course it shows you the you know status right here if it's running on the inverter fine and then if there's a fault so great to have these little things especially if the inverter is not like right next to you so like you can see here the air conditioner did kick on when the inverter turned on because i had the air conditioner set to on and it's using you know almost 80 watts now this is normal for it to run just on fan mode but i do have the air conditioner turned down pretty cold and we're going to probably have compressor kicking on and off you know to cool the room so that's kind of a real world scenario for me is to use an air conditioner because it does kick on and off. So pretty soon this is going to kick up when the air conditioner compressor kicks on. All right, compressor kicked on, did not catch the surge, but that's okay. Right now it's running at about 420 ish watts or so that will slowly work its way up to around 600 ish uh, on a normal running cycle. All right, so I'm gonna turn the heat gun on now, add another 1500 watts to it, see what it does around the 2000 watt range. Look at that, it's definitely over 2000 kilowatts. It's holding it well. Now the heat gun is kicking on and off because I'm lowering the temperature on it a little bit. If I have it on full blast, it will constantly run at its full 1500 watts plus the fan 1600 watts, something like that. It's got a 1500 watt heating element in it. So I'm trying to turn it down a little bit so I can actually just get it to come on the way I want it to come on. So if you'll watch the wattage, which is what I'm doing, it's kicking up. It's got that heating element kicking on, but I want to get it to run right around 2000 watts. Right now it is running the air conditioner and the heating gun. And again, it's over ratings right now. It's at 2.2, so it's kicking out, you know, for a short period of time there, it was kicking out 2200 watts. No faults, no issues with it. Right now we are running basically right on the max. Look at that kilowatts. It's bouncing right around 2000 watts you know up and down and again that's why I'm trying to find the right temperature on this heating gun to push it to its max and let it run at its max for a while as you can see it's still going over 2000 up and down not complaining at all so it is definitely handling what it's supposed to be handling right now so if you'll notice I have the inverter turned off right now the inverter is running great it's running awesome but the batteries are not able to handle this inverter. But again, we're not testing the battery, we're testing the inverter and everything that I've sent through this thing so far says yes, it will do what it says it will do. So our plan with this inverter is actually to install it in the RV and we're gonna have certain things running off of certain inverters. So this one's gonna be running in our RV and it's probably gonna run an average of 1,000 to 1,500 watts when it's being used. So I have absolutely no concerns about this inverter doing everything that it needs to do in the RV. 
even after this and pushing it over, I mean, of course we didn't do it for a long period of time because of the battery, but I mean, nothing. It's, it's not even warm. It's still just room temperature. So yeah, I definitely think, you know, after running it for 10 minutes or so, um, pushing it to its maxes, it did great. So yeah, I definitely give this thing a thumbs up and I hope this review was helpful. Thank you very much for watching. Y'all take care.